This is Will Montgomery, former Washington Redskins center. Yo, what's good, folks? This is Trey Johnson, the headbanger, yo. And you're listening to Mess Hall with Rally Captain and Tailgate Ted. Word. What's going on, Rally? How you doing, man? Yo, Ted, I'm doing good, man. Just uh, got off my bicycle and uh, did about 20 miles. So I'm, 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 I'm a little winded, but feeling good. It's, it's uh, food for the soul. Yeah, uh, 20 miles is a little more than food for the soul, man. That, that's a buffet. That's a big feast, man. <laughs> well, if that's the case, then come uh, May, when I do that century ride, what's that called? <laughs> <laughs> that's a smorgasbord. <laughs> no, yeah, we got we got to figure that out, man. It's that's crazy. Right? I still can't believe you're doing that. Hats off to you. You know, I, I know that you've been training for this thing for a while. That's exciting to see. I can't wait to hear about how all that goes. I will be sitting on a beach someplace, just trying to learn how to surf and not break anything. So in May, okay. Oh yeah, yeah. I was uh, last time we talked. I was hoping to get to the beach last week. Got to the beach. Mother Nature decided to make it 20 degrees out, and I did not go in the water at all you mean to tell me you didn't want to be a part of the polar bear plunge i drove past all those crazy people <laughs> there was zero chance it was 20 degrees out and then with the wind chill it was like six yeah it's just no way you couldn't i don't i get it's for charity but mm -hmm. i'm sorry i'll think of other ways to raise money for charity i don't need to turn myself into a filipino popsicle it's just <laughs> does not make any sense to me not the pp <laughs> 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 Zero chance, man. Zero <laughs> chance. But now you, you might motivate me to get back on my Peloton. I know I got a green screen back here, but I got one sitting behind me in my little studio. So I might have to jump back on that thing. I seen my boy Chad Dukes is getting back on his and hey, man, you're riding your bike all over town. So I might get some inspiration from you guys. You know, well, B Mitch is my inspiration. You know, oh, I used yeah. to I used to ride last year. I rode with them a couple of times and the year, year prior to that a couple of times. So, you know, it's just hard with my schedule trying to catch up with those guys but riding 30 is, is a good group to be with so oh you you, know. you could have stopped at catch up with those guys because b and them have asked me to go out as well and i've got a hybrid bike i bought it during covid just like everybody else did mm -hmm. yeah, but i just casually go around town and yeah i follow b on strava he follows me yeah. and my average miles per hour is nowhere near his and <laughs> i'm blaming your average? It. I got to go back and look. I want to say it was maybe less than 10 miles an hour. Oh, yeah, yeah. You'll get left. Yeah. And I've heard how he's treated some of the guys that, you know, ride with them in that group. I'm like, I'm going to have to get an electric bike just to try and keep up with you. <laughs> yeah, those guys, the average man, I think sometimes 18 to, 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 to 19 miles an hour, man. I'm pulling up my Strava right now to see what it says. But, yeah, there was zero chance that I was averaging that. And... You know, I don't mind riding because I enjoyed it going around town. I prefer to be on the water now just because it's mm -hmm. easier on me. Yeah. But the last long ride I did, and I think some of this is because I might stop and take pictures along the way, mm -hmm. but it was uh, 21.28 miles around Anacostia Park in D.C., and it didn't give me my speed, so I'm thinking there might be a reason why. But hey, you know, hats off to you guys. And maybe one of these days, like they've invited me to go out and play golf with them, like B and JP and those guys. Like, yeah, I don't want to embarrass myself, man. You know, it's, I know my role. I'll cook them food. I'll drink some scotch with them and some liquor and smoke a cigar. But if you want me to try and do sports with a future Hall of Famer and a blogger, that's going to be pretty. It's, I mean, ugly. I mean, yeah, I got you. Well, I tell you what, I'll I'll take care of the riding for you then. It's, there you this go. Is an, this is an honor for Ted. Let's go. I'll be at the finish line, hanging out there with a uh, was it a squirt bottle full of like a vodka cocktail or something, waiting for you guys. <laughs> so that that works for me. All right. But speaking of in honor, Ron Rivera just got awarded the Salute to Service Award from USAA. So he is actually the twelfth annual winner of the Salute to Service Award. And nice. Congrats to coach. I know the military means a ton to him. His dad was a warrant officer in the military for 32 years. Mm -hmm. And the commanders do a ton. They did a ton with the military before we were the commanders. So I'm thinking that's partially why the name might have somewhat made sense, considering we are in D.C. And they always do a bunch of big stuff. But they gave Rivera the award 
and because of his efforts, seeing troops off as they departed for overseas assignments, hosting 250 military members and veterans to training camp, and contributions to my friends at Operation Warrior Wishes, TAPS, the Tragedy Assistance Program for Survivors, and the USO. So we criticize Coach when he gets things wrong, and I want to commend him, take this time to you know give him a round of applause for doing this and getting this right, because you know it means a lot to the guys that they had at training camp. And I know a bunch of those guys with Warrior Wishes because yeah. they came to tailgate with me this season. And mm -hmm. getting a chance to have that one-on-one -on -one time with the players, that meant the world to them. So really hats off to Coach Rivera for doing that. Good job, Coach. Way to go. But to interestingly go. enough, Coach actually did a press conference based on winning that award. And the commanders have been quiet. They haven't actually said or done anything since the end of the season press conference with Rivera and Mayhew. So coach was on with, I want to say it was a NFL network. So he talked to Andro Siciliano and a bunch of other talking heads on there. Mm -hmm. One tidbit that came out of that was Rivera talking about QB1 next year. I'm going to guess you haven't heard this soundbite yet because it just dropped. But no, I'm all right. right. I'm, but, I'm, but I'm waiting with bated breath, brother. I was actually surprised to hear this. So this is actually Rivera talking about QB one for next season. Ron, looking ahead, do you think your starting quarterback week one is on your roster right now? Well, I think he most certainly can be. I, I know this. We will go into OTA's mini camp and training camp. Uh, with Sam Howell more likely at QB1, and we'll see what happens. I mean, it's his opportunity. This is a challenge to him. You know, if he comes out and does the things that he's capable of, we believe he's capable of, he can most certainly be our guy. But we'll find out. And, again, that's what competition is going to do. It's going to bring out the best in all our guys. So hearing that going into OTAs and minicamp and training camp, Howell will more than likely be QB1. So I'm not mad at that. I'm not mad at that either. I'm actually happy to hear that because, you know, we've talked about it. And for those wondering, it's Wednesday, February 8th. I don't want us to get a free agent quarterback. I don't want us to try and get Derek Carr or Geno Smith or some mm -hmm. of these other guys out there. Yeah. I don't want us to draft a quarterback. I want us to roll with Sam and get a cheap backup someplace. And hearing that they're going to potentially give Sam that QB one spot, I'm all for that. You know, so am I. And and the thing I like about it is it puts that young man's mind at ease. Even though they say they don't worry about it. Oh, well, you know, it's just I don't read the media and all that nonsense. It puts his mind at ease. And depending on who the offensive coordinator is, it will give him that much more to be able to get into that playbook and, and get his mind right. Because... He knows what it takes to be a starter. I mean, he was a starter in North Carolina. So I'm happy to hear that because I know if it was me, I'd feel better knowing that, hey, I'm the man. And now it's up to me to, to put the city and the team on my back and make things happen. Yeah, and I'm sure Hal was excited to hear that from Coach, that soundbite. And, you know, we often like to say less is more of Rivera, but I'm, I appreciate this clip and what he said during mm -hmm. this USAA salute to service, basically press conference that he kind of did with NFL network. And you know, the question is who's the quarterback like QB two going to be? Cause it's not going to be Carson Wentz. We all know he's getting cut. Heineke's a free agent. Scott Turner landed in Las Vegas. So he's with the Raiders. So I was wondering if, you know, the Raiders are getting rid of Derek Carr, they're trading him or they're going to cut him. I think cars owed almost 30 million on his number, but they can cut him for 5 million. So that's a no brainer. So they gave him permission to start talking to teams. Carr started talking to the saints today. I think the saints coach Carr has affiliation with, so they're going to try and trade him. But with that being said, the Raiders don't have a ton of people on their roster. So I'm kind of curious if that means Heineke might go out there with his former BFF, Scott Turner, and maybe compete for a backup role. Interested to hear your thoughts on that, because if that does happen, then where does that leave us with Heineke potentially coming here? Because their quarterbacks right now are Jarrett Stidham and Chase Garber. No idea who in the world Chase Garber is. 
But Stidham obviously came in last year when Carr got benched. Well, it's a, to me, it's a common sense type of thing. I mean, Scott Turner, Heineke, you know, they've got that, that bromance going on. So it only makes sense. I can see Taylor going in and holding that clipboard. He could be another Rex Grossman. I mean, we know Sexy Rex, he held that clipboard for a long time with us, bro. So, you know, just waiting for his opportunity. I, I can see that happening. I really can. And, yeah, I can too. And and with with uh, him not go, not really asking for a lot of money, you know, Las Vegas has money. So yeah, they they're going to free up a ton of cap space. Yeah, they can throw something at him, you know. But better yet, I'm not even worried about that. I'm, I'm, what I'm worried about, I shouldn't even say worried. I, I, I echo what you said. I'm very happy that Sam Howe, that's what I'm going to focus on. I, what, what I can focus on. All that other stuff, it's going to happen. It's going oh, to yeah. unfold. It's unfold but, but Sam being the man, I'm happy with that because we know where our money lays with him. And we know how much money we need to structure to get these, hopefully, three to four linemen, yeah. and linebackers, and other and other other nuggets, DBs. Yeah, I mean, there's yeah. we got a lot of holes to fill, and yep. if QB one isn't one, and you know, hopefully, with Hal being able to go in there. Now, granted, he had 169 yards against the Cowboys, mm -hmm. but he showed some moxie. He showed that he can do this, and you know, I'm not saying he's going to take us to the promised land. But what I am saying is I'm fine riding with Hal into next season and having him be QB1, and then we figure out what we got with him. Because mm -hmm. if Hal ain't it, I hate to say it, but Rivera's going to get fired. Then the new guy can bring in someone he wants that he handpicked himself, and we're not stuck in this vicious cycle again. So fingers crossed. Rivera contradicts himself a lot, but fingers crossed what he says here actually stays pat all the way through. Now, I know you're not going to like this, and our listeners may be surprised with this, but believe it or not, based uh -oh. off of Howell's last performance, I equate him to Joe Burrow. I really do. I, I, see, I, see, I see him in that realm. Just give the man an opportunity. Because if we remember, Burrow's line was terrible, but he was still getting things done. I see that being the case with Howell. Watch. He definitely has some of those qualities. It's yeah. just Burrow has some intangibles. There's a reason why he was drafted so high. And there's also a reason why Howell dropped from a first-round pick to a fifth-round pick. So I'm just hoping he's kind of got that Gilbert Arenas chip on his shoulder. Mm -hmm. And he tries to prove everybody wrong. And he actually gets a shot to do that. But he doesn't try to do too much. Right. It's all going to come down to who in the world's our offensive coordinator? Because they're holding off hope that they can interview Bienemy mm. after the Super Bowl, but Bienemy ain't coming here. I'm sorry. It just it's not happening. I mean, do you do you think that they even have enough money to even entice him? I mean, come on, man. You I know, do. They, I I, you, I think that okay. they have a shot, but it's just if you're Bienemy, you have so many options. And Bienemy was on record this past week, it's actually on Monday at the Super Bowl talking about how he's only talking about head coaching possessions, oh, not offensive okay. coordinator possessions. Okay. And the enemy actually said, and it was a quote that a lot of people were kind of curious about, but he talked about being where his feet are, which is something Rivera constantly says. So there was a lot of speculation about that, but apparently that's something that Andy Reid has said and others have said in the past, mm -hmm. but the enemy basically said that, you no, know, he's happy in Kansas city. Now, his contract in Kansas City is up, so he no. can either re-up his contract yeah. Neat, or yeah. he goes someplace else. But so the enemy's not coming here, and coordinators are getting gobbled up left and right. Mm -hmm. So if you really want one of these other guys out there, you got to start doing something about it. And I'm a little concerned that the guy who I wouldn't mind, the guy from San Francisco that they interviewed, he mm -hmm. might get gobbled up by someone else too. Then they'll go back to Zampezi. Which I'll be fine with because that gives Howell another shot of being in a similar system and not mm -hmm. having to learn new language, being it his only second year in the league. And I think this is all going to get blown up next year anyway. 
so it doesn't really matter. Mm -hmm. But it's just the dragging and dragging on, which is frustrating, but it's also Super Bowl week, so not a lot of stuff happens Super Bowl week. But something that did happen is the Virginia government actually passed a bill. Governor Yunkin proposed setting aside $500,000, which doesn't sound like a lot, in the <laughs> VA state budget to plan a potential relocation of the team. The money would let Virginia's Secretary of Finance develop relevant capabilities, conduct planning, and evaluate potential economic, economic incentives in fiscal year 2024. So they're talking about creating another stadium authority. It says here, the House of Delegates Appropriations Committee unanimously approved a budget proposal Sunday to create a football stadium authority and study potential incentives to help bring the team from Maryland to Virginia. So we're in this cycle again where Virginia is trying to throw their hat back in the ring, knowing that a potential ownership change is in play and that, hey, maybe if Bezos or someone else comes in, they'd be easier to deal with and they might not have to take as many taxpayer dollars out of it to get a team to come there. Curious what your thoughts are on the whole Virginia Stadium thing now. Uh, the the only time that I was even vaguely interested in a stadium in Virginia is when they were talking about putting it in Alexandria. And we know now that that's a long, long gone idea from here. But I think that was what? Was that 90 that they were talking about that? That, that, that area in Alexandria? Yeah. That's the only place that to me would have made sense as far as location wise. Any other place in Virginia, I don't want it. Now, once again, and we've 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 swam these waters before. Do would I still go to the games? Yeah, I still would go to the games. Closer maybe to you. Not, maybe not. Maybe not as a season ticket holder, but I will still go to the games. The the, the the bigger games or the how about this? The opponents that I want to see. Yeah. Okay. So I would still probably go. But we, if they want to create a bidding war, fine, fine. We all know where it needs to go. We all know where it pretty much will go with the new owner. I, I, my fingers are crossed. I say that. So stop, you know, playing around and, and, and let's just get past this first hurdle, which is when is DS going to go ahead and let the cat out of the bag that he's, he's done, done. You know, we know he's done. Yeah. Done, done, done. And and go ahead and, and move forward. And then once we move forward, if they want, whether it's Maryland, Virginia, DC, RFK, they want to create a bidding war, whatever have you, so be it. But we got to clear the first hurdle. And yeah, $500,000. I mean, I don't have that. <laughs> I may have it in assets. But yeah. as far as, you know, cash on hand, I don't have that. So hey, all that, that old Redskins gear is going to be worth something someday. <laughs> it doesn't sound like a lot of money, bro. Now, if he said, hey, we're throwing up a million, or we're throwing up uh, two million or, 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 or higher, then you might have my ear. But 500,000, that's just basically putting a fork on the table and you still are missing the plate, the place, Matt. You know, yeah. you, you know what I'm saying? So, ah, Yunkin. <laughs> yeah, it's, they went through this last year yeah. and then they had a chance to vote on it and the vote never happened because people basically polled their constituents and nobody wanted to work with Snyder. Mm -hmm. And breaking news, Roger Goodell just spoke at the Super Bowl and he was asked about the marriage of wedding investigation and Goodell came out and said, there's no timeline on the completion of the marriage of white investigation into Dan Snyder and the Washington commanders. And there's no update on the same. So the smoking gun that everyone's been waiting for is potentially the marriage of white report. Well, Goodell just said no timeline. So I feel that they're stringing this out oh, yeah. to let Dan walk away on his own terms and sell the team. And this report may never see the light of day. That's just me speculating, tailgate to that. I got no reason to believe that from anywhere else. That's just kind of what I'm thinking here because what's taking so long? You know, it'll come, they've already it, been investigated. It, it'll come out in a 30 for 30. 
<laughs> that, that, that's what it'll come out on the ESPN 30 for 30. But like you, I, I agree with you. I don't think that right now is the time for it to come out because we are basically a month out, you know, from, yeah. from this thing basically being fully sold. So potentially, hey, at, the, potentially. at the earliest, potentially, yeah, at, yeah. The, at the earliest. Yeah. Yeah. That's what I'm saying. So, you know, why poke the bear, man? Just, just, just let him sleep in London. You know what I mean? Oh yeah. And that's, you know, we always say, well, I always say if our local beat guys aren't the ones talking about it, I don't have time for it. And mm -hmm. Charles Gasparano, he is a Fox business network analyst came out with a tweet today saying, quote, scoop, NFL sources say sale of commanders will take place weeks after Super Bowl and owners meeting in March. Despite denials, most people in NFL circles think Jeff Bezos will bid after initial bids are in. Given his wealth, he's most capable to make numbers work for a purchase. Hey, Charles, that's not a scoop, brother. That's something that everybody in their right mind knows. So you yeah. need to get that check mark taken away from you on Twitter unless you actually paid for that thing. Cause that was probably the <laughs> worst case of breaking news I have ever seen before. Look, we talked about this several episodes back right now. Bezos is like I said, back in the day when I was an eBay hawk, he's just <laughs> circling. He's just circling in that, that last minute, he's going to throw it down. Bam. I, I, I'm speculating, people. Don't don't, don't say rally captain said I'm speculating because that's what I would do if it was me. You know, I wait for that last minute, just like when I we were bidding heavily on eBay. And for everybody who remembers our 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 podcast that we put out there, I was an eBay hawker. So <laughs> that sucker could have ten seconds left, and I'm putting my bid down, and I'm taking everybody to camp, and I'm coming home with the prize. So that's what I see. Bezos doing I see him just circling you're like okay not yet we still got we still got a couple months on the bid nah, let those guys go ahead and fight it out because I know when I put up my billion or whatever it is that I that I need it'll be all good it's purely speculation on my behalf so don't say I hear you yeah. and I'm speculating that I don't think he's going to make a bid okay I'm hearing that, you know, they really, really don't want to sell to him. And yeah. Bank of America has been courting Bezos. Bank of America has been reaching out because they get a percentage of the sale. Mm -hmm. So if you're going to get paid, Bank of America, you're going to reach out to one of the richest people in the world to try and get them to bid on it. But billionaires don't like being told no. Mm -hmm. And imagine Snyder hell, getting the hell, last... thousandaires don't like being oh, told yeah. no to... <laughs> I'm, it's like I'm I want a thousand buy, air and I don't want to yeah. be told no. <laughs> I'm trying to buy a new surfboard and Mrs. Tailgate's saying that's way too expensive. And I, I don't want to hear it. So I might just have to buy it and she'll just see me on it one day. Hey, but sounds you know, familiar. it's just <laughs> yeah, it's <laughs> Snyder would get the last laugh on Bezos if he sold it for less money just out of spite. Mm. And he would be able to just walk away to the sunset in London and just hang out there. So it just makes me wonder, does he really get told no? And Snyder basically give him the cold shoulder, ghost him, because he doesn't have to sell. We actually got a couple of text messages asking if it has to go to the highest bidder. No, this is a private sale. Mm -hmm. He can sell it to whoever he wants to. Now keep that in mind. It has to be approved by the other owners. But the other owners aren't going to not approve a sale that Snyder does to another person that can actually afford it versus Jeff Bezos, because then that would be discrimination at that point. So there, there's a lot of moving parts and who knows, but you know, we've all been saying, we've been saying on our show, nothing's going to happen until the owner's meetings in March. So not really holding my breath, don't even really care. But when you've got these national guys talking about scoops, when everyone here locally has been saying that, I mean, JP Finley, John Kime, all the guys here have been saying that for months. That ain't a scoop, man. You need to listen to DMV Mess Hall. Maybe get some of your news from us because we could told you that a couple of months ago. Yeah. But we didn't get a chance to talk about it last week. It was 2 2 22. We recorded on 2 1 22. Mm -hmm. And it kind of frustrated me hearing other shows 
talk about the rebrand and just talk about some of the stuff that happened during it. I wanted to hear a year in, we're the commanders. How have you felt about the name change? Do you still slip up every once in a while? I mean, what are your thoughts a year into this? And not talking particularly about, you know, how they rolled it out. Just the fact that we are the commanders now. Bum, ba -dum, ba -bum, bum, bum. Uh, <laughs> Ted, I, I, I said it in the beginning and I'll continue to say it. I didn't have a dog in the fight to begin with. And as I told you, we could have been hypothetically named the Washington Pixies. I'm okay with it. I'm, I'm, because I, I'm, I'm okay with it because I didn't have a say about it. If that makes sense. If, if, they, if they truly came to me and said, rally captain what do you want and 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 i said hypothetically red wolves and i was banking on red wolves and then they came up with commanders then yeah i would be upset but i never had any say to begin with we knew that it, the name was changing what it was we, we didn't know we're the commanders now and that's what it is so i'm not one of these guys who is, is still stuck on i will never call them the commanders they're still redskins to me as and I've always said it in my heart. They will never change. They will always be the Redskins in my heart. However, the powers that be above my pay grade have changed the name to the commanders. And you've got one or two things that you can do with that. Whether you want to hear it or not, you can either go with it or you cannot go with it. But they're moving. They moved on. So. What do you see on, the, on my chest? That W is for Washington Commanders. You? And I, I agree with you. You know, it's just, I did get a chance to talk to them. And this was back when I had a better relationship with the team. Before everything completely flipped and turned over. You know, Jason Wright had come on board. We had a private meeting. It was a Zoom at that point to talk to him. And then I got a chance, the day we lost our name, and the people that were there, they're no longer there with the team anymore, but I went to FedEx and I sat in my parking spot and I smoked a cigar and I hung out there. And some of the executives saw me there and they invited me in the stadium. And we sat in my seats in my section for maybe two hours and talked about the name and it changing and what we're going to be in the interim. And I gave my recommendation and then they told me why that wouldn't work. And my recommendation, which was based off of a recommendation from one of my crew members from the tailgate, was the Washington Hale. So we get to keep Hale at that point in the name, but Hale as in a hailstorm. You've got the mm -hmm. Tampa Bay Lightning. We would be the Washington Hale. And it kind of fits different things and somewhat a nod. The answer I got back from them was people would take it out of context and turn it around into a Nazi type of name. So I finally Heil, understood that. Yeah. Like Heil, exactly. So people, they were saying, I hear you. I hear you. Okay. And that's why, you know, remember when we did that event with Will Misselbrook, the rebrand guy and Jason, and they talked about how Washington hogs was a name that women fans of this team did not want because it was a derogatory term in their eyes and they didn't want that backlash. So it immediately got shot down by that base that they ended up polling and taking surveys from. So, but okay, but, 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 but okay, hold on, hold on, hold on. And, and I hate to interrupt you, but no, see what, what bothers me about all that is this, what's our mascot? <laughs> Major Tony. I hear well, what is he? He's a hog. Come on. So don't, don't, don't see, don't do that to me. That's don't, what they said. Don't you do were there too. too. I, yes, I was, and I and I understand that. But man, don't do that to me. And that's why I say I, that to me is look. They did what they did, so we have what we have. But when you say stuff like that, then to me, that the mascot should not have been a hog. It was that's a cash all. grab, in my opinion. They, they went to that because during this entire rebrand. You know, movies, TV shows like uh, Stranger Things, 
you know, and then you've got like all these, like that 90s show is now on Netflix. It's nostalgia. People watch those shows because of nostalgia. It reminds you of stuff from growing up. So they kept the fight song with the same lyrics to a degree because they wanted people to have that nostalgia feel to it. They kept the colors burgundy and gold because they knew that the fan base would revolt if you try to change this to red, white, and blue. You know, and they used a hog to try and honor the past teams at that point and what we're famous for. But in actuality, all they did was screw themselves up because the hogs, they don't even own that trademark. So it's just, in my opinion, the rebrand was not done right. But yeah. I have made peace with the name. Mm -hmm. I have stopped calling them the old name by accident just because I have to for TV. I'm going to be on Fox 5 Friday cooking up a Super Bowl feast okay. over there. You know, I'm going to get a chance to talk about the commanders. And I haven't been able to wear my old gear on TV just because they didn't want to see it on TV. So I get it. And those fans that are still holding out, you know, you guys will come around whenever you come around and you don't, you don't, Hey, that's you. Yeah. But some people are holding hope that a new owner is going to come in and change it again. And you and I are on record saying we ain't going to be down for that. No, that's not going to happen. I mean, it's wishful thinking and you can wish upon a star for anything that you want, but, uh, no, nah, I don't think it's going to happen. So, and like, I don't hate the name. I really don't hate yeah. the name. It does not bother me at all. No, I don't hate it either. It, it, Other, you know, yeah. the people that wanted Red Wolves, that whole thing. I just, if it wasn't for Smoot, I don't think it would have got that much traction. But hey, it, it, we're not it. And people wanted to keep that because you want to keep a hashtag. Then they made our hashtag HTTC to try and go with that nostalgia again. I just, I wish they would have tried to move away and did some creative stuff. You know, I, I got a friend, she wrote a book and it was a 2021 like best hits on, I can't remember what exactly it was, like New York Times bestseller list. Mm -hmm. And she has a deal to write another book. She's not writing a sequel to her book that won a bunch of awards. She's writing an all new original story. You know, sometimes the sequels, don't really work out. And I feel like the commanders and what they try to do with us has been a half-assed sequel. It's like years ago, TV had a writer strike and you could tell the quality of the shows went downhill during yeah. that strike because you I had like the that. scab guys come in. Mm -hmm. I feel like that's what this has been. And I'm hoping that all those mistakes are kind of past us and we can just move on as the commanders. I also wish we would just come up with a, a nickname because it's just, it's a mouthful to say, and it's a pain to tweet that the entire time. The Durs, but, the Gummies. I mean, how many, how many times have we heard that? We've heard all these crazy things, man. I mean, it's just, <laughs> it's never ending, man. You know, it's no. just, and from these Eagles fans that are in the Super Bowl and you were up there when we won that game, you know, it's just, I can't imagine the things that they were calling you when you were in the stands after we ended up beating them that night up there. Can you believe that there are Commanders fans that are pulling for the Eagles right now in the Super Bowl? I can. And and the only reason why I can is because they are pretty close to us. I mean, in proximity, it is only about a two and a half hour drive, two hour drive. So, uh, and they are NFC East. So that's the only reason why uh, I get asked all the time. So who you who you rooting for for the game? And I said, neither team. Just give me a good game. Oh, come on. You got to like somebody. I said, I don't. I, I just don't. I mean, I, I, it's nothing against uh, Kansas City, nothing against the Eagles. I just don't have a dog in the fight. Just give me a good game. And that's what I want to see. And no, yeah, I, just, I, will not, I will not be doing anything with DraftKings this weekend. <laughs> <laughs> I was so happy there was nothing to bet on this past weekend. I mean, I, I ended up, we went to the beach. I watched the Ovechkin documentary. On uh, ABC, I watched some of the Pro Bowl. I didn't mind the dodgeball that they have for the Pro Bowl. The flag football, I could have kind of done without. But I didn't really mind how they changed the Pro Bowl game up. It, it was weird, though, that they split it up over three days. I guess actually four days, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. So it was just a lot going on. Did you get a chance to watch any of the Pro Bowl stuff? Uh, no. <laughs> <laughs> 
<laughs> Did you see Terry in the water balloon, at least on Instagram or Twitter? I saw a picture of him making a goofy face, trying to, what it looked like to catch it or something to that effect. But that, bro, that stuff just doesn't move me. So, you know, I had so many other things that I was working on that the Pro Bowl was just not one of my highlights that I was trying to get to sit down into, in front of the television and watch. It just wasn't. Yeah. And it, for me, it was just literally sitting around waiting to go out and go do stuff or it was way too cold to go out. So I sat on my couch and watched that. But fans were upset because Terry basically kind of he didn't sacrifice his body and dive for the water balloon, but he lunged and caught the water balloon and people were kind of judging it. Was it a catch? Was it not a catch? And this and that. And some people are criticizing saying he could have, you know, hurt himself or messed up his knee based upon the pictures and all this stuff. I'm like, these guys are out there having fun. Let them have fun. It is what it is, but I am not on board for rooting for the Eagles. I mean, I think the Eagles are going to win Sunday. Let me put that out there. I think that they are the better team. I think that they have a chance to actually really pull this off. I am not rooting for them. But if I was going to bet on FanDuel, which I'm going to on Friday when I'm in Maryland, oh. I'm putting money on the Eagles. Because I think they are going to win this game just because Mahomes isn't 100%. They've got some banged up corners. They've got two rookies starting in their defense. The Eagles have the better offensive line. They got the better pass rush. It's just what can Andy Reid scheme up? But I don't understand, like Micah Parsons was on Twitter the other day saying he's rooting for the Eagles. It's like, that's your rival. How can you be rooting for your rival to win a Super Bowl? I don't get that. Like the city of New York, I'm sure you saw this, the yeah. Empire State Building. Yeah. They changed their colors to the Eagles Ooh, colors. Green and white. And I think it's just because it's inter interconference. That that that's all, bro. I mean, that that that's it. Unless some, unless I hear Mike, why exactly Michael Parsons says it, I'm just gonna go with interconference. Does does he say why? I don't remember exactly why he did it at that point. Uh, he go win a bowl for our division. Okay. Yeah, conference. And I just this isn't like college. This isn't like the SEC wanting to keep it there. You know, the one thing we had over the Eagles for years was the fact that their trophy case was empty. Yeah. Right. The last thing we need is for them to add a second Lombardi to their trophy case when we've only got three. Yes, we've got five championships, but we only got three. So yeah. the last thing I want is for them to be happy, add another Lombardi there, same division or not. And then you've got these, I'm sorry delusional Washington fans saying, well, the Eagles won the Super Bowl and we beat the Eagles. So does that mean we're better than them? <laughs> no, they didn't say that. They Come do, on. man. Come they on. do. Come on. Take that win for what it was for what it was. I mean, at the time it was it was a great win. It was a great feeling, but the better team is still playing. So don't even go there. Just just come on, guys. Stop. Stop. And that that's the thing though. That's just and Pete Haley was on uh, 1067 the fan today saying that he can see Ron Rivera talking about if the Eagles win, talking about how we beat them and that game plan because we ran the ball 49 times and see we should run two to one because that's how we beat the eventual Super Bowl champions. And I can actually see Rivera saying that too. So well, that's gonna, another reason why I don't want them to win. He's going to hang his hat on it. And, and truthfully, that's one of your highlights of the year in prime time. So I can see you hanging your hat on it. But you know as well as I do that we need more. Oh, yeah. And, and we need a lot more. So while that was a feel-good victory, and yeah, I, I, I rubbed my face all in the Eagles fans up in <laughs> Philly. And yes, you can do that, ladies and gentlemen. Don't, I, you know, get it out of your mind that you can't go to Philly with your colors on and just, just stop it, all right? Because I did it, I do it, and I will continue. As long as God allows me to, or whoever you pray to allows me to, then that's what I'm going to continue to do. So, yeah. so, so just cancel that. But, uh, I can see him doing that and because it's a feel good story. It's, it's a feel good story. 
it is a feel good story, but it's just, you know, and Hey, people can root for whoever they want to root for. I just don't get it. And will never understand why you would ever root for someone in your division, because that is your direct competition and to actively pull and be okay with them. And this came out of a poll that was looking at geotags from people rooting for the Eagles. So these are people in our area that are tweeting about it. And maybe all the commanders fans have just had that mental vacation, like Rivera playing golf at the pro-am and they just haven't been on social media. I don't know. I just, I am not okay with commanders fans, Washington fans pulling for them, but Hey, y'all do you, it is what it is. I just don't want to see you at my tailgate next year. Cause I ain't going to feed you. Once you root for the Eagles, to me, you're an Eagles fan. And I don't like you, Eagles fans. You can't keep up with everybody that roots for Eagles fans. I, it sounds good. I know it does, but you can't keep up with everybody, brother. Let we used to, uh, let, it was a, in, man. it was a Ravens game years ago, man. Mm -hmm. And I actually ended up getting a, a metal detector. So we would patch you down with a metal detector. If you were a Ravens fan and you came to the tailgate and then we had a Polaroid camera and we put up a wall of shame and we took a picture of y'all. And if you want to come eat and hang out with us, we patted you down. We did the metal detector just as a joke. And we hung your picture up there. And there were a couple of fans that we let join us, but I hate Ravens fans. Maybe as much as I can't stand Cowboys fans. Wow. And I, I know you've been to m and Yes, I have. They despise Washington. I mean, Baltimore does not like D.C. They've got little yeah. brother syndrome and the vitriol that they constantly throw at us because we get coverage and they don't, even though their team wins and we don't, you know, they just haven't got over it. So I'm just not a fan of, other than Matt Valdez from the Junkies, I can't stand Ravens fans. You know, man, I honestly can say that Everywhere that I've been, I may start off getting jaw jacked, but once people talk to me, that goes out the window. So I can't, I can't say that I really have a a, a hate. A, I, Eagles definitely. I can say that that their mouths just just no matter even even if they get to know me, they still feel they can just talk to you any other kind of way. So I don't like that. Um, but, uh, and I think Dallas is second, you know, but man, I, I just, just, I just let it go, bro. <laughs> but I'm, I will not be rooting for the Eagles. I will not, uh, just show me a good game and whoever wins my hats off to them. And that's all I can say about that. <laughs> yeah, it's, it, it will be hopefully a good game. That's, that's what I'm praying for. You know, yeah. you going out anywhere for it. You just hang it home. Uh, I'm chilling like a villain, brother. <laughs> I still have never been in, actually, no, I've been invited to one Super Bowl party. It just, it goes back to my whole, no one invites me to a barbecue because they don't want to feed me. They're worried about me critiquing their food. And, you know, people, I, I'm not going to critique your food to your face. To I'm your gonna face, have dang, dang. <laughs> I, not the, if it's but, good, but, I'll tell them. But if it's bad, I'm not going to say anything. Behind her back, but behind her back, man. Rally captain invited me over for a Super Bowl party, and this <laughs> food was trash. I love the dude, but this food was trash. Like, can you you gonna do that to me, Ted? You would do that nah, to me, man, because your food ain't gonna be trash. So it's you're fine. right, because I would go to ZZQ and and in in Richmond uh, and bring it back. Then I'm coming over. I, I would be there in a heartbeat. <laughs> it's just. I was at Costco today because I'm getting ready for my Fox five appearance yeah, and I'm yeah. buying stuff. And I had a bunch of people ask me like what they should make for the Super Bowl. Like, you know, I might have to start like a tip hotline or something. If you guys want recipes for the Super Bowl and your different parties, you can call me, you know, at 202, blah, blah, blah. And, you know, we can figure that out like a 900 number from back in the day. But yeah, I just, I think I'm just hanging out at home, just watching the game here with my leftovers from TV and then just going from there. Can't go wrong with that seven layer dip. Yeah, I'm actually going to be making a cheesesteak queso. So instead of that a regular good. queso, Philly cheesesteak style, and then a, uh, let's see, some uh, Kansas City pulled pork sliders. Oh, that sounds good. With some Hawaiian bread and some coleslaw on top and some jalapeno, fried jalapenos, man. So yeah, what, what time are you doing that? Bro? Hey, whatever time you want to come over, you know the address, <laughs> man. That's not a problem. And you can critique my food and tell me the truth in front of me. That's fine.
well, if we'll see, you've already got my nod of approval from the greens. So, you know, if this ain't like those greens, you know, it's all gravy, baby. That's how it is. I'm going to start prepping that when we get done with the show. So fingers crossed, but Mm, mm -mm. talking about nod of approvals, the commanders have on May 1st, they have to see if they're going to exercise Chase Young's fifth year option. So yeah, May 1st, the teams have to actually see if they want to pick that option up. They decided not to pick up Deron Payne's option this past year. Chase's option is going to be $17.45 million in 2024. So it's not this year's cap. It's exercising if they're going to keep him on that fifth year in 2024. Given the fact of what he's done, that he has had uh, nine career sacks, seven and a half he got his rookie year, and that he got hurt in 21 and only played three games this year, and knowing what they've got to do, do you exercise his option? Chase is, is one of these guys who I think for the longest time, the team does a thing that's called, but he could do this, or he, he possibly could do that. The, what the upside is, that's where Chase is, I believe. And so you, you're almost, you're damned if you do, damned if you don't. And I, and I hate to be in limbo like that, but, but that's just how it is right now, man. You know, we know the kid, if, he, if he's right, what he can do. But we also know if he's wrong, what he can do. And we've seen both sides of the spectrum. And I kind of hate that they waited, if he was healthy, that is, that they waited to, to bring him in so late in the season. If he wasn't healthy, then okay, I, I, we've been over that already, you know, yeah. numerous of times. But if he was healthy and they waited this long, then you did yourself and you did him, Chase, a disservice. Um, I think that, so, and I don't, and I'm going to say this right now, I don't know too much about or understand necessarily the fifth year option. So is it a situation where if rookies have a four year deal? So rookies uh-huh. have a four year deal and right. first round rookies. And it is up to the team if at the end, basically of not the end, but coming up to the end of their deal, they can exercise a automatic fifth year. Mm-hmm. And the NFL comes out with the values each year of that fifth year because they're technically not under contract. Mm-hmm. The team has the option if they want to keep them under contract. So they did this with Montez Sweat. They exercised his option for $11.5 million. They did this in April of last year. They had a chance to do it with Deron Payne, and they decided not to. So technically... Payne would be under contract next year if the team exercised his option and they could have got him for cheaper. The franchise tag, I think we said was 17 million or 18 million for Montez or sorry, Duran. They could have exercised his option and got him for a lot less than 18 million next year, but Rivera didn't want to do it. The Marty's didn't want to do it because they extended John Allen and they drafted Phil Mathis and they basically had a plan to get out of being in the Duran Payne business. Well, the team balls out. Yeah. Yeah. Deron balls out, gets 11 and a half sacks. He's going to get paid. Is he going to get paid by the commanders? And on top of that, Montez is getting paid. Do you also then want to spend almost $18 million on Chase Young's potential? And the problem I have is, as I said, you're damned if you do, damned if you don't, because the minute that you don't, and hypothetically he goes somewhere else and he balls out, what do we always have done? We've said it, man, that guy was on our team. <laughs> oh, yeah. Well, we've said it so many times, but on the on the flip side, he wets the bed, and, he's, and we're saying, whew, man, I'm glad we didn't do that. You just don't know. So I think, I think if I had to roll a dice, and that's, that's all I can go by, I, I'm going to have to go ahead and, and, I, and, and give it to him. And then yeah. he's going, he's going, he's, I'd have to give it to him and see where he is. And then I'd have to let him go if he doesn't come up to what I need him to be. 
So just for numbers wise, and these numbers are going to go up, the 2023 salary cap tag number for a defensive end is $19.7 million. So let's say the commanders decide not to exercise his option and chase balls out. They're going to have to tag him or extend him if they want to keep him. And that defensive end franchise tag number is going to be more than 19 million. It's mm-hmm. going to be in the 20 something because it just, it always goes up because it's the yeah. average of the different defensive ends, at people at your position. So I'm with you. We don't know how Chase is going to be. Just hope that he gets an entire healthy off season mm-hmm. where he's not on the aspirin cycling team and he's not coming back from something. You know, I hope Chase is not doing a century ride with you sitting out there, you know, on the turf field and they get a chance and they extend this guy. And then during that, they do what they did with Terry and with John because he balled out. They give him a legit extension selfishly yeah. because I bought a 99 black commander's Jersey, but I did like what I saw from chase when he did come back in this season. Yeah. yeah. And I'm, I'm with you. Hopefully he is doing the right thing. Uh, this off season to get himself together because he also has some demons in his head, regardless of whether people want him, he wants to admit it or not. He, he, in his mind needs to know that he can do it. And we had a small sample size uh, for those, that those couple games to where he did show promise, but he still just didn't. Uh, but, yeah. but we saw, we saw, we saw, you know, specs of it we need to see a full swath of it instead of specs so hey man i I say you got to go ahead and sign him and you got to let the chips fall where they fall but hopefully he's doing what he needs to do as a professional to get himself in order to make it right yeah i mean to me for chase to live up to his draft pick he's got to be like what's his joey bosa Mm-hmm. or Nick Bosa, whichever the one place for the Niners. He's got to be disruptive like that for where we took him because he is always going to be compared to us potentially taking a quarterback at that spot in his draft class. And right now, he hasn't lived up to it, and we're still in QB hell. But extend the young man. Exercise his option, not extend him. Ex- exercise his option because this team has 99 problems. And let's not add Chase to be another one of them. Let's figure out the rest of it. Let's see what Sam does, and let's just go from there. My man, I like how you you slid it in there like that. (laughs) Well, I hear the music playing in the background, which lets me know that we have come to our time to close out another edition of the DMV Mess Hall. Ted, I appreciate it, my brother. Thank you for always bringing the fun and the knowledge. And everyone who's listening, thank you guys. I always say you could be listening to any other podcast, but you decide to tune in to the DMV Mess Hall. So on behalf of Rally Captain and Tailgate Ted, we're going to be out. <laughs>